What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today I'm going to show you how you can create this really cute bear illustration. We're going for like a really painting style with today and of course everything is built into Procreate in terms of the brushes that I've used today. Of course you're going to need the canvas size though and the palette and there is also a stencil guide for the actual bear itself so we can get through all the basic shapes and then just enjoy the painting experience. Now if you want to get early access to YouTube tutorials you can come and join me over on Patreon. Not only do you get early access to tutorials here on YouTube but you also get access to a catalogue of exclusive tutorials that are only available to patrons. I'll throw up the latest three on the screen now. If you're interested in coming and supporting me over on Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've added in today's stencil, which I've already dropped down to about 15% opacity, and to add in the stencil, you're gonna to need to download it from the link in the description down below, and you're gonna to wanna to go up to your actions, and if we go to the option of add, you can go ahead and insert a photo. You'll also notice I have a drawing guide on the screen as well, this symmetry line down the middle. So we're gonna go straight up to our actions, we're gonna to go to canvas, and we're gonna to go to the drawing guide here, turn this on, then edit the drawing guide and go to the option of symmetry. And if you make sure the option is set to vertical, this is gonna make life really easy for us because if we hit done, any layer that we now go to and we create a new layer, so I'm gonna create a new layer, you're gonna to need to follow along at this point, drag it underneath, and if we tap on the layer, we can go ahead and turn on the drawing assist, which now means what we draw on one layer, for example, is then done on the opposite side. Now we're gonna to go to our background color. We're gonna change it to the very bottom right color in the palette. We're gonna hit done. And then we're gonna go ahead and rename this layer. We're gonna call it head. We're gonna make sure it's drawing assisted, which it is. If we go to our colors, we're gonna grab the middle color in the second column from the right. And we're gonna to need to change our brush. We're gonna to need to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And if you tap on the monoline brush and you go to the stabilization tab, you'll see I've turned up my streamline all the way up to max. Stabilization is at 65%, just so we can get some really wonderful smooth lines in here and Procreate will nicely smooth them out for us and get rid of all our little jitters in there. Now the size is currently maxed out. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is draw in the head. So you can see it on your stencil once you've added it in. Mine's very faint, but you're just about to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this a little bit just so I can see, and I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna bring that line all the way down. in towards the bottom point, just trying to make sure your lines run into each other nice and smooth and then drag and drop the color in. We've got the head shape for our bear. We're then gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We'll rename the layer. We're gonna rename them all as we go, just so you know what my layers are and which ones I'm referring to. So I've renamed this nose. And if we then tap on the layer and we go to the drawing assist, we can make sure it's gonna use the symmetry tool. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the middle color in the far right column we're gonna add in this shape here in the middle of the nose. So my brush size is still fairly large. I'm just gonna bring it down to 55. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's just what you're most comfortable with. And I'm gonna bring in this shape all the way down here in towards that bottom point, drag and drop my color in. We're then gonna to go to our layers and create another new layer, rename this one. And we're gonna call it features because these are gonna be items that we can draw in right now in solid color that are not gonna change later on. We can tap on features, we can go to the option of drawing assist. If we go to our colors, we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of the fifth column. Now I'm gonna bring my brush size down to about sort of 20% and we're gonna focus on the nose here. I'm gonna start just here and I'm gonna create what is essentially a heart, but it's just flattened at the top. You can drag and drop your color in. Then I'm gonna drop it down to the 6% mark. If I zoom in here, I'm just gonna create a line that goes down our symmetry line to about here and then I'm just gonna create a lovely smooth arc smile off to the side. And what we can then do is move across to this eye over here. Again, it's using the symmetry tool. So what we do on one side is reflected on the other. And we're just gonna draw in the shape of the eye. So it's a little bit weightier at the bottom just to give it a little bit more of a innocent look to it. And then drag and drop the color in. Zoom out, make sure you're happy with your eyes. I just need to go ahead and just round this off a little bit thicker at the top here and that's just mine. Everybody's is gonna look slightly different. And then now we've got those in place, we can then go to our brush. If we change our brush to the option of inking and the studio pen, 
we're going to add in some other details. Now the size is set to 19%. It's pressure sensitive and it will taper on the end, meaning it will get nice and thin if you let go of the pressure, such as that. Now we're not going to create an angry bear. We're going to create a nice innocent bear. And to do that, we're just going to create some very simple sort of teardrop shape eyebrows up here. Then the other detail we're going to introduce is a very light little taper here into a little bit of the mouth underneath. So they're the two additional details that you're going to need to add in for your bear. And on the same layer, we can actually finish these off completely by going to our colors, grab the middle color in the far right column. And then with the bear, we're going to add in two details to it. In the face, we're going to go ahead and in the eyes, add a little dot down here. We're then gonna add in another highlight that sits at the top up here. Now you don't want it too close to the edge. So just a little something like this. And then on the nose, we'll add in a very thin edge and then nice and sort of thick towards the middle. So then just let that sort of round off at the top, somewhat highlight in the top of the nose. We can always come back to it and fix it later on if needs be. But now our little bear's got a really innocent look to it already. Let's move on to the rest of the shapes. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to drag it underneath the head and drag it down and we're going to create three layers in total and group them together. So I'm going to create two new layers, swipe from left to right on all three and group them together. And if we rename the group, we're going to call it ears because the ears have three layers to them. Once we've collapsed that down and we go to the bottom layer in the ears group, we're going to tap on it and we're going to use the drawing assist, of course. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color in that second column from the right. And let's go back to our calligraphy brush of the monoline just so we can get all of our shapes in. Again, you can max it out on size if you like. And we're going to draw in the larger shape of the ear. So we're going to go around here, just creating a lovely big curve. And then from there, go all the way to your start point and drag and drop the color in. Then we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go up a layer, tap on it and turn off on the drawing assist. We're going to go to our colors and grab the bottom color in the sixth column. And we're going to do the inner circle here. So we're just going to create the inner circle of the ear. Again, go to your start point and drag and drop your color in. Then go to your layers, up one more, tap on it and drawing assist it. Go to your colors, grab that middle color in the second column from the right and just do this tiny little one here for the ear as well. If we zoom out, we've got some lovely little ear shapes. We can now move on to the rest of the body. So we can collapse the ears down. We'll create a new layer. We'll drag it underneath the ears. We're going to rename this and we're going to call it arms. We're going to again get rid of our keyboard, tap on the layer and use the drawing assist. And we're going to simply just pick a side that you want to start on. I'm going to start in the middle. I've got the maxed out brush size. It doesn't matter at all what your brush size is, whatever you feel is most easiest for you. And then go round all the way to your start point so you can drag and drop the color in. We're then going to go to our layers and create another new layer. Now I'm not going to move this one. I'm going to tap on it and add the drawing assist and I'm going to rename it and we'll call it feet. Collapse our keyboard down. We're going to go to our colors and grab the bottom color in that sixth column. And we're going to draw in the main shape here for the feet. So we're going to start off at the bottom here, just drawing up and around, go round to the ground and then just kind of flatten out a little bit and go round to your start point. Just make sure when you link it up that your lines are nice and smooth into one another. There's no little bumps or lumps. And there we go. We've got the soles of the feet. We're then going to go ahead and create another new layer. I'm not going to rename this one though. I am going to tap on it and add the drawing assist, of course. We're going to go to our colors and grab the middle color in that far right column. And we're going to draw in the little pads at the bottom here. You can see we've got the guide with the four dots and they are just the monoline brush maxed out in size. And we're going to go one, two, three, Four. And then from there, we're just going to create essentially a rounded triangle that runs into the middle of them and then back into the middle and then fill in the gap. We'll then go to our layers and create another new layer. We'll drag it underneath all of those ones. We'll tap on it and we'll rename it. We'll call it body. We'll collapse our keyboard down, tap on the layer and we're going to add the drawing assist. And if we go to our colors, we're going to go ahead and grab a lovely light pink color to the bottom here of that third column from the right. And we're gonna go ahead and link up here at the bottom. So we're just gonna go across here. Once I've drawn this little line, I can let go and then I'm gonna to have to make my way through the feet and then just sort of go up here 
all the way around underneath the nose. Just make sure you can find a line on the opposite side that you can drag and drop the color into. And you've added the body of your bear. Now at this stage, you've got all of the layers you need in order to start now adding in the painting effect. So we're gonna utilize the drawing assist throughout as well. And if you want to, you can create separate layers for all of the different colors we're gonna create. Otherwise, for example, we're gonna to go to the head, we're gonna tap on the head and we're gonna alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of it. If we go to our colors, we're gonna move into a lighter tone, first of all, so the bottom of the second column from the right. We're gonna move into our painting brush of choice and feel free to change it to whatever you like. If you want the same aesthetic that I'm going for, it's painting and the spectra brush. I've got a size that I'm gonna sort of float around, it's about 6%, but I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Now this brush is pressure sensitive, so if we press really firm, we'll get a big blob of color like so, but if we start really light and we start on the outside over here and sort of, sort of blend around, our light source is coming from the top, so it's gonna be brighter at the top and then darker, of course, towards the bottom. So I'm just sort of creating a bit of a gradient of color here to start with, just a foundation sort of gradient of color. You can get back in here, press really firm if you like, it's totally up to you. You can come down the nose as well, just sort of brightening that up if needs be. So once we've gone ahead and just sort of brighten that up, bringing the color down, we're then gonna move into this color here, the middle of the far right column. Now we're gonna add a highlight, and don't worry about your sort of sizing just yet, we'll sort it out in a moment. Now the size is set to 11%. What I mean by that is we're gonna just simply brighten up the top edge. We're gonna start really lightly though, and we wanna just sort of brighten up, and you're gonna now see the texture of the brush really come into play. And I want the sort of forehead area up here to be a little bit brighter. I think this adds a little bit more of a sort of a teddy aesthetic to it because it's got a little bit of a, a messy look to it. And then once we've sort of added in a bit of a highlight that we can see and we're happy with, we're then gonna go to our colors and go back down to the base color. So the middle color here, even in that second column from the right. If we then start on the outside edge over here and sort of round off, we can start to sort of round off that highlight a little bit and push it in towards the center of the face a little bit more and let that sort of shading come round at the bottom. What you can then also do is then get in here and kind of around the face, just sort of blend that out a little bit, kind of pushing it up onto the forehead a bit more. And by all means, if you liked your highlight coming down onto like the face, for example, please feel free to go back to your brush, go back to that color in the middle of the far right column. And then just at this point, just bring that back in again just a little bit more and bring it further down the face if you wish. We just wanted to round off that highlight a little bit more on the edges just to focus it more towards the center of the face. So now we've done our highlights, we're gonna go ahead and add in some lovely rosy cheeks and some warmer colors towards the bottom of the face. So if we go to our colors, we're gonna grab the top of the second column from the right. And we're gonna focus it more towards the bottom area, of course, so we're gonna start off by going round in a circle down here, really like just to start with, just so you can get sort of the, the gauge for the color. And you wanna let it run just up towards sort of the top area of the eyes, not any further than that. And then you can really bulk out this pink towards the bottom. You see the harder I press, I get this much brighter pink color towards the bottom. Then we're gonna move into our colors. We're gonna grab the top of the third column and we're gonna then sort of curve our pen a little bit, just lightly. And we're gonna let that pink that we originally drew just up here, live there, and then this red here is now gonna take over in the bottom areas a bit more and sort of make sure underneath the, the nose especially it gets a little bit darker. And you should end up with these lovely red streaks. Try and be a bit bold with your painting, Ch chuck in some color. Then go to your colors and grab the next color, the darker tone again, the middle of the third column, and just go round in a circle just towards the cheek area and go round in a circle, kind of really punch out the red even more, just creating these lovely big rosy cheeks towards the bottom. So you end up with this kind of aesthetic here. Then what we're gonna do is move into a shading color, which is actually gonna be this color here, the middle of the third column. We're gonna bring the brush size down to about sort of 6% on this occasion. I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna start off in the middle, underneath the nose, and then I'm gonna blend out towards the left, and then just kind of build a shadow. So now I've sort of drawn in my basic shadow, I can get braver and braver and then start to sort of push in outwards with a darker tone, primarily underneath the nose like so. Then we can go ahead and reduce the brush size down to maybe about sort of two or three percent and just add in a little bit of a shadow underneath the eyes, just a tiny bit, nothing too low or too solid, just a little bit of a shadow there just to add in some additional color. 
I'm then gonna bring up the size to 6% and then go around the very bottom edge of the face and kind of just very quickly kind of blend this in to the face as well. So just kind of blend that up a tiny bit in towards the cheeks. But we wanna make sure under here is nice and dark. Once you've got that shadow in place, we can then start to move on to the next part of the design, which is gonna be the ears. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and open up the ears group. We're gonna tap on the bottom layer in it and we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of it. And we're gonna repeat basically the same process. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab the bottom color in the second column. We will brighten up the top edge up here first. So just adding in the bright yellow. And again, it's drawing assisted, of course. So it's gonna do it on both sides for us. So we're just gonna blend in the yellow at the top. We'll then go to our colors. I'm gonna move into this pink color at the top of that second column from the right. We'll leave our highlights right to the end. And then the first step is just to kind of darken up under here. So just round this edge where it joins the face and the head and then sort of blend that out on the right. So just blending this in, creating that gradient of color. Then go to your colors again. We're gonna jump straight to the middle color in the third column from the right and just darken up under here. You'll start to see the sort of shading and the highlights start to sort of separate now because we're boosting the contrast. So we're just creating a lovely gradient. And then we're gonna to go to our colors again. I'm gonna grab our shading color, the middle of the third column, and we're gonna just introduce a shadow tone that's gonna to sit underneath here. So just underneath the ear. I'm gonna bring it back up to the 6% marker and just sort of darken up where it connects to the head, just darkening that up the most. Then maybe bringing the size down to 4%. I'm always bouncing between four and six just to see what fits and what I'm most comfortable with. And I'm just trying to create a lovely sort of rounding edge over here of the ear, just darkening up the underside of it. And then we'll move into our highlight at the end, which is the middle color of the far right column. And we'll just brighten up on the top edge up here. So just brightening this up, introducing the final little highlight up there, and then maybe a tiny little bit of highlight just here as well, just on the inside of the ear. Let's then move on to the next part of the ears, which is the blue area. So we'll tap on that. We'll go ahead and alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. We'll go to our colors. Now we're gonna make our way through some of these blue tones here. So we're gonna to go to the next color up. It's the middle of the sixth column. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna introduce it towards the top edge. So we're just gonna bring that in. It'll be very, very subtle to start with. And we're gonna leave the original base color towards the bottom. So just brightening it up towards the top. Then go to your colors, go up a color, the top of that sixth column now. And again, don't go as far as the previous color, just sort of blend with lots of layers on top of each other. Then go to your colors and move across to this color here, the top of the fifth column and add in the brightest blue, which is gonna sit up here, just for a moment anyway. So up here, then we're gonna to go to our colors again. We're gonna switch into our new shadow color, which is gonna be this one. So it's the middle of the fifth column. And we're gonna shadow underneath the ear here, just creating a little bit of a shadow, blending it out. So I'm doing lots of light strokes and they're all slowly building up on top of each other and also layering outwards as well, meaning that they're gonna sort of create lots of sort of flat layers of color. So building up that color there gives us a lovely little shadow inside the ear. And then we just need to move on to this tiny little bit here of the ears. So we'll go to our layers, we'll go up a layer, tap on it and we will alpha lock it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my colors and grab this color here, the top of the third column from the right. Again, it's drawing assisted, so all we need to do is kind of just follow the same curve of these shadows. I just wanna leave a tiny little bit of orange on the end. So once I've added in this little bit of red, I'm then gonna to go to my color and grab our new shadow color, the fifth color in the middle row, and then just shade here as well. And a little bit more towards the underside. Let's then move on to the nose of our bear. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to the nose layer and we're gonna tap on it and make sure it is alpha locked. We're gonna to go to our colors though, and because it's a light area, I wanna use a slightly lighter shadow. So I'm gonna grab this color here, the top of the third column. And just like we did before, we're gonna go ahead and darken up and then darken up at the bottom, but we wanna keep it really, really light to start with. So keep your pressure really, really light if you can, and then round off at the bottom. And you kind of want your shadow at the bottom to be a little bit darker than the edges. 
and that's all we need to kind of do to sort of darken up into this corner here like so and just introduce this lovely little bit of purple we could use gray but it'd be very very boring and we've got a really colorful bear so we're just going to go around just keep building that up lightly until you get to something like this so let's move on to the next part of the bear so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go down towards the bottom of our sort of layers here and we're going to move into the feet so we're going to tap on the feet we're going to alpha lock them so we can't paint outside of them of course we're going to stick with this shadow color we're currently using because of course we're about to paint in the white area don't worry about sort of the feet area at the minute these four dots we're going to focus on this little pad here so i'm going to go ahead and just shadow over the top now i'm going to bring that size down to about 3%. I'm gonna shadow over the top here, and I'm gonna shadow underneath the bottom as well. So just rounding this off, blending it in towards the white area. And if you get like those paint strokes, it's fine. You really are trying to give off that painting look. And then add in the tiniest little shadow over here on this edge. And then I wanna make sure that the shadow at the bottom is the largest out of the, out of the three sides of our little rounded triangle here. And then what we can go ahead and do is if we bring our brush size down to 2%, we can just darken up the bottom edge of these little pads. Don't worry if you've got a little bit of color spillover, because what we're going to do is as long as we darken up the bottom areas first, so just darkening up the bottom here, sort of leaving that little highlight on the top, if you've still got the blank space, as long as we darken up the bottom area of these pads, like so, we can then go to our color and grab the middle color in that far right column, and you can just brighten up the top edge if you need to. So just add in a bit more highlight. If we go to our colors and we grab the middle color here in the third column, I'm gonna make the brush size about 3% and I'm just gonna darken up right up on the edge here, just sort of blending in at the bottom, a little bit of a darker line under here. I'm then gonna reduce my brush size down to a very small 2% or one, and then just at the very bottom edge of our little pads as well, the little sort of circles, just add in a slightly darker color just on the bottom edge like so let's then go ahead and move into the feet themselves so let's tap on them let's alpha lock them of course let's go to our colors and let's move into a blue color so we had the base color here we're going to move up to this color here it's the middle of that sixth column your brush wants to go back to the six percent and we're going to start to highlight sort of the top edge a bit more so i'm going to go round you'll see that color start to come in and we're going to Highlight first of all at the top before we move into shadows at the bottom. And it's a very subtle change of color, so you might not be able to see too much. As long as you just keep stroking from left to right, you'll build up the color and all that kind of painting texture within the blue area now. If we go to our colors and move up a color, so the top of the sixth column, we can then brighten up the top a bit more, creating that curve, following the curve of the shape of the foot, and then brightening up the top edge a bit more. So just to sort of see that highlight coming down. Then go to your colors and grab this color here, the top of the fifth column. And we're gonna focus this one really more so towards the top edge only, creating a bit of a sort of rounded shape as if we're seeing the top edge of the foot. You can bring that down and in towards here a little bit, but really kind of focusing as much as we can towards that top edge. And we're gonna to go to our colors. We will add a little bit of the middle color on that far right column, so it's practically white. Just going to add in a little bit of extra white on the top edge here just really lightly like so then we're going to move into some shadows so we're going to go to our colors we're going to move to our shadow color here the middle of the fifth column we're going to put i'll keep the brush at six percent and we're going to just shadow underneath this bottom edge again just you want to go lightly left to right build up the shadow build it up blend it up by just doing light stroke after light stroke and then making sure we darken up the very bottom edge, like so, where it's touching the ground and we've got a lovely little shading area here at the very bottom. Now we wanna add some cool little highlights and shadows to these little areas here of the feet. So I'm gonna reduce the brush size now we're done with sort of the larger overall highlights and shadows. I've reduced it down to about 2% and we're gonna shadow on the top edge of some of these areas here, the pads. Now I'm gonna to have to make my brush size probably a large 1% here and go round the top edge. So we're gonna try our best to keep it as light as possible and then build outwards a very light layer. Then do the same for every single one. So just the top edge of these little circles, we're pressing quite firm, quite close to the, the actual circle itself to create a dark ring. And then very lightly building a lighter coat outwards. And we're gonna somewhat indent 
these white areas into this blue space of the bear. Doing the same down here too. And then just one larger ring that's a little bit lighter. We also want to do it for this area here as well. So we're going to go along the edge, just giving it that dark edge. You may have to do it in a few, a few attempts. Coming along this edge of the foot, along here too. You may want to increase the brush size up to like 2% if that makes life easier for you. And then you can create that much larger shadow on the top edge. So it's just that lighter coat. And no indentation is complete without then the highlight indentation as well. So if we go to our colors, we can use blue, we can use white. I'm going to go ahead and use that middle color on the far right column. Just be quite sparing with it. We're going to bring that brush size down to the 1% again and repeat, but on the bottom edge this time. So we're just going to go around the very bottom edge, giving it a little bit of a brighter coat and then very lightly create a larger ring, just a little bit larger than the solid white line that you just created. So exactly the same, but just on the bottom edge. So we just create a light ring here and then a light coat outwards, just like so. And that looks now like it's indented in our little bear's paw here. Do the same down here, a larger ring as well, and the same down here too. Gonna come down here around this edge. I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit larger, about 2% now, just to make my life a little bit easier. Keeping my pressure super, super light. And there we go. We've got the indentation of our little feet. If we go to our layers, we're gonna move into the next part of the design, which is the arms. We'll tap on the arms, we'll alpha lock them, of course. We'll go to our colors and we're gonna make our way through this collection again. So we're gonna start off with the shadows first. So we're gonna grab the top color in that second column. We're gonna go back to the 6% brush size and we're just gonna darken up around here. So I'm coming around this edge, darkening up towards the bottom, trying to create streak after streak. We're gonna darken up underneath the head, of course. So we're gonna leave like a little bit of sort of orange on this top area here. Now, if you've already seen the final design, of course, in the intro, we're gonna add the blue ends of the paws as well as a separate layer in a moment. So don't worry about that too much on the ends even of your highlights and shadows. If we go to our top color here in the third column from the right, we'll do exactly the same, but just don't go as far as the previous color. That way you see all the colors that you're painting in. So we've got the pink, we've got the orange, we've now got this darker red here at the bottom. Then we'll go to our colors again. We'll grab the next darker tone, so it's the middle of the third column, same rule applies. Don't go as high as the previous color. So we go around here. We can darken up underneath the head though, that's fine. And we can sort of lightly sort of just shadow that in a little bit more and then come down the top of the, the arms. We're then gonna go to our colors and grab our shadow color. So the fifth color in that middle row. And we're gonna go ahead and go around the very bottom edge, keeping it quite light to start with. This is quite a bold color, so it's gonna, it's gonna really darken up. Going to darken it up, just creating streak after streak, and then darkening up the bottom edge more so. I'm going to probably reduce that down to the 4% mark, 4 or 3, and then just sort of darken up the top edge of the arms and underneath the face, just so that we can just blend that in really lightly here and create a little bit of a seamless sort of movement between these two areas here, and obviously a shadow as well. So I'm going to go up to 6% and just sort of lightly just create a bit of a shadow on the top of the arms. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna create the ends of the uh, arms as well with the little paw pads. So we're gonna create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to the arm shape. We'll tap on that layer and we will drawing assist it. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab our base color for the blues. So it's the bottom of the fifth column from the right or bottom of the sixth column, whichever one you prefer. And we're gonna add in a little bit of a sort of curve here on the ends of our arms. And then we want a little bit of sort of overlap of the color. We want sort of a few light streaks here, but then solid blue in the middle. So we just end up with the tips with a little bit of blue. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna tap on this layer and alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of the blue area. That gives us a lot more sort of creative freedom so we don't have to worry about running outside the shape. If we go to our colors, we move up straight to the top of that fifth, uh, sixth column. Uh, brush size could probably drop down to around about that 3% mark. We're going to take a look at where we've added in our brightest oranges here and then sort of go from there and then blend down following kind of the curvature of the lines that we've drawn in on the previous layers. So I'm leaving this top area here a little bit darker and I'm focusing my highlight here because that's where the highlight runs in and it will look seamless but just a different color. So I'm following the curvature of all those lines 
And then I'm going to go to my colours again and grab the top of the fifth column now for our brightest blue. And we'll do exactly the same. You follow the curve of where your highlights are coming in, brightest spot here, and then blend that out streak after streak. Let's add some cool little details on here as well. So we're going to go to our layer. We'll go ahead and create a new layer. Tap on it and clipping mask it. Tap on it and drawing assist it. If we go to our colours and we grab this colour here, it's the fifth colour in that middle row. I'm going to go to our brush and I'm going to switch it back to the option of inking and the studio pen. And we're just going to add three very simple shapes here. We're going to start off with a little bit of pressure outside here and then just flick them in. So one, two and three. That's all we need to add. If we then go back down to the layer with all our blues on, we're going to keep the same colour we're working with, but switch our brush back to the painting brush. So we're back to Spectra. Same size as it was before, I'm just going to continue on my shadows this time around this bottom edge into the blues and blend upwards a little bit more, making sure the bottom edge is nice and dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and reduce the brush size down to about sort of 2%, zoom in, and on the top edge of these lines we've drawn in, just add a tiny light stroke here of shadow. Then we'll go to our colours and grab this colour here, the top of the fifth column, and then on the underside of those lines, introduce a brighter line. Underside, a little bit of a brighter line, and underside again. So kind of the same effect that we added a little bit lower down on the feet, we've now added at the top here. And that just separates all of those lines and gives them a bit more of a 3D look to it. We now need to move into the body. So we're going to go ahead and tap on the body, tap on it, and alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of it, of course. Now if we go to our colours, we're going to just jump straight to the top here of that third column from the right. Our brush wants to go back to the 6%. Now, because we've got all this dark shadow here, we're going to have to really shadow under here, and we're going to have to start off with a colour that doesn't match necessarily. Underside of our little arms here, over here on the right too, and then at the bottom, blend up to here. So you're going to end up with a little bit of a lighter sort of patch here in the middle of your design. So the middle of your body here is going to end up with a little bit of a, a lighter spot, and that's great, that's what we want. And then we just have to progressively keep making our way through the darker colours before we add the highlights. So we're going to grab the middle colour now, that slightly darker red, the middle colour in that third column from the right. We'll darken up underneath the head again, blending down underneath our arms. Again, you don't go as far as the previous colour ended. So we shadow under here, blending up. And then we're going to go ahead and move. So we're going to grab the middle of the third column. We're going to shadow underneath the head and blend it down. And if you press quite firm, you'll be able to create a bit of a seamless line between your face and the body. We then want to go ahead and just add that shadow underneath the paws as well. Just adding in a lovely dark colour over here on the right too. At the bottom, left to right, blending up, just creating that darker tone where the body's just sat on the floor. And then again, you'll leave the tummy nice and bright. Now we want to introduce a little bit of sort of the orange in there too. So we're going to go to our colours. We're going to grab the middle colour here in that second column from the right. And I'm going to bring the brush size probably down to that 3% mark. And just sort of in this triangle area, I can see that I've been left with in the middle. Just going to introduce a bit of orange and blend it down a little bit over the top of those shadows. Because the bear should be uh, orange, of course, to match up to the rest of it. But here in the shadows, we start to utilise a lot of the red colours. I've gone up a tiny bit there. And then I'm just going to brighten up the belly a little bit more. And if I go to my colours, I'm also going to go ahead and grab a little bit of white, this middle colour in the far right column. We're going to keep this super, super, super light. So just here in the centre, just a little, little zigzag left to right. Take a look at what's been dashed on. See if you like it. Otherwise, redo it. And just a little something like this, I think, just gives a nice little amount of colour in there. Now, we need to go ahead and add in some of the background elements. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers. Our bear is technically done with. Feel free to flatten it down if you wish. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Drag it underneath the body here. And we're going to go to our colours, making sure we're still using that far right colour. We're going to make sure we go to the layers. We're going to tap on the layer and we're going to drawing assist it. So it's doing the same on both sides. We're going to make the brush size probably a little bit bigger, about 16%. And essentially, I need to draw a circle behind our bear. So I'm going to start off quite firm in the middle and then lightly just blend that out. So I want to create like a bit of a glow just behind. It just helps like a cartoon like this. Just have a little bit more uh, colour, a little bit more sort of emphasis on the background and also stand out from the background as well. 
I'm just going to make sure it's a little bit lighter, just pushing that texture a little bit further outwards from the bear. And then once you've created a good solid base in the middle, we're going to go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our layer. We're going to tap on it and alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of it. If we go to our colors and we grab the top right color in the palette, we go back to the layer. We tap on the layer that we just alpha locked and we fill it. It's now going to go purple. And if we grab our brush, our cursor, grab freeform and drag it down, flattening that down into a nice little circle. You can make it a little bit narrower as well. And you can just position that in the center of your design. Make sure if you've got snapping here turned on, you'll be able to see that orange line in the middle, making sure you hit that center point. And we have a lovely little shadow around our bear. If you tap on your cursor, we can reduce our brush size down to the 6% and make sure in the middle is nice and dark. But we need to make sure we go to the layer and turn off the alpha lock before we can do that. And we can nicely now just sort of darken up underneath the bear, like so pushing that color outwards a little bit more. And we can go to our colors and grab our shadow color, the middle of the fifth column, and then just lightly underneath the body here, darken that up, underneath the feet, darken that up and pushing it outwards. You should create a lovely little shadow there on the ground. Nothing too dark. Let's then go ahead and add in some extra decoration around the outside of our bear. Feel free to leave it as this if you like, but we're gonna go ahead and add some more details. So we're going to go to our layers, we're going to create a new layer. And at the minute we've got those two layers there for the background and the actual background color and obviously everything for the bear. So if you want to keep your layers nice and organized, you can swipe from left to right on everything for the bear. If you want to keep them and group them together and just collapse it down. We know it's the bear group, it's got the whole of the bear in it. This new empty layer underneath the bear group, we're going to tap on it and make sure it uses the drawing assist so we can do it on both sides at the same time. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this green here at the bottom of the fifth column. Your brush wants to be set to the inking brush that we used before, the studio pen. And we're going to draw in some flowers, etc., to go around the outside of our bear. So I'm going to start on the right hand side and I'm just going to create sort of spaces for a few different flowers. So I'm going to create roughly three that are going to sit on the outside. So I'm just going to create sort of these little shapes here. So there's one. I'm then going to go ahead and create another one and sort of varying up my weights, just creating lovely little shapes here. I'm going to create another one that's going to sort of round a little bit closer to the head. And I want it to have a really nice thin taper on the end, a little something like this. And then on this one, I'm going to go ahead and just flick out some additional sort of areas of green. I'll do the same for this one here too. I'll just go ahead and create another additional line. And then this one here at the bottom, I'm going to do exactly the same as well and just create those lovely additional lines that just flick off from there. Once we've done that, we can then go ahead and go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer, tap on it and use the drawing assist. We're going to add in our flower heads. So we're going to go to our colors and I'm going to start off with this color here, the middle color in that fourth column. And I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to create five petals. Really simple. Start on the tip here of your uh, blades there that you just drew in and just draw kind of tear shapes. And you may make some slightly larger than the other. That's fine. We're, we're drawing a cartoon bear, so it, you can have things slightly sort of out of proportion. You don't want them super perfect anyway. A little something like this, though, will do the trick. On the same layer, I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of the third column. I'm going to add in another flower up here and again, do exactly the same. Starting off from my top of my blades there, you can create the bottom two if that's easier for you, a little something like this. And then you've got space then to add in the larger ones. Everybody's will look different. Yours will look different to mine. And I want it to be nice and cartoony. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here, the bottom of the second column. We're going to add in our final one just up here. I'm going to create another one. And that's our final little leaf. And zoom out. The flowers are looking good. I'm kind of happy with them. I just want to sort of adjust a few of the shapes just to sort of make them a little bit more uh, rounded. That one looks fine to me and the rest also do as well. Now, before we add in any further details on these, we're going to add in some additional elements. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers, create a new layer, tap on it. And we're going to go ahead and use the drawing assist and drag it underneath the top of your flower head. So you've got 
the flowers an empty layer and then the blades underneath. We're gonna to go to our layers, making sure we grab that middle one that we just created. Go to your colors and grab the bottom of the fourth column. We're gonna to need to press with a little bit of pressure here. We're gonna add in some additional sort of blades of green here. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and go up to the 57% mark here, just so I can be uh, a little bit more expressive with the pressure and I can just sort of create these little blades. Now we don't want this kind of end on it. We want it to have a smooth transition from sort of large to small. So it may take a couple of attempts and to be honest, the quicker you do it, the better. And we can just create some additional sort of blades of green out here. And sometimes it's easier to start at the beginning and then make your way down and in back into the greens. I'm gonna go ahead and create another one here and just let that run in. Now they don't have to necessarily run into those greens that we previously created. Feel free to do whatever you like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just create some additional areas here. I'm gonna create another one that just goes up here and into there, running down. And you can let them go as high as you like. You could maybe create a couple more up there, but I'm really happy with sort of the placement of mine. They frame our bear nicely. And now we can go ahead and start to add some color to these three individual layers, as well as some additional petals that are sitting at the top. So if we go to the layer we were just working on, just simply tap on it, alpha lock it. Let's change our color. We'll go to the color just beside it on the right, so the bottom of the fifth column. Our brush wants to go back to the painting brush that we use in the Spectra. The size is six, but it can go lower, probably get best to actually, down to about three. And then just on the top edge of them, just really lightly create a lovely stroke of color. And if you let your sort of pressure get really light towards the end, you'll end up with a lovely amount of color here and then just it just blends out and naturally just sort of fades out. So I've started off really heavy here and it kind of blends into the blade of the grass. If I undo that and then redo it, those original sort of blades and stems, uh, sorry, that I created before, now have this sort of gradient effect as they run into one another. So you can really sort of fade things into each other and in, in, in and out of each other if you keep the pressure sort of uh, nice and heavy and then nice and light. So nice and heavy here and then let that blend out. This one here is a bit close. So if you do have one that's a bit close, just grab your selection tool use the freehand option and make sure color fill is turned off and just simply draw around the one you're gonna work on. Tap on the dots and now it's just isolated to that area. And then you can grab your brush and we'll start off uh, nice and firm at the bottom, of course, like we were doing, and then just let that just blend out at the top. The drawing assist won't work though, so you're gonna to have to go over to the other side and do it again over here. So you're gonna to have to go back over here, draw around the shape that you were just last working on go to your brush and then just heavily at the bottom pressure and then nice and light as you get towards the top. Nice and simple. Tap on your selection tool when you're done. Let's move then into the actual flowers themselves. I'm gonna tap on them, alpha lock them of course so we can't paint outside of them. Each color has its own sort of, uh, sort of partner color. So the reds for example, we're gonna grab the bottom here of the third column. Brush is probably gonna need to be a lot smaller, about sort of 2%. Let's imagine that light source is coming from the top, which it is. We're gonna somewhat sort of brighten up the top edges of the petals and give them a little bit more of a 3D look as well. So you're pointing inwards, always towards this center point. This blade here in the middle is fine just to sort of add some color to the middle and then blend it side to side. But then these ones here, if we sort of curve our lighting a little bit more and then blend it out, we can brighten it up towards the top edge only. We can go ahead and at the bottom here, create like a circle of light and then just kind of blend it in towards the center. Circle of light and then just slowly blend it in towards the center, like so. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna create another new layer above. Tap on this and we're gonna go to the option of drawing assist. We're gonna go to our colors and then each one is gonna have a different colored spot in the middle. So I'm gonna grab the middle here of the fourth column with the brush set to something really small, about 1%, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in a circle really lightly first of all, so we get that nice soft edge to it, and then the very center of it really brighten it up. So you should have two sort of layers to it. The outside edge, a little bit more faint, and a little dot in the middle. And in a moment, we're also gonna move into some shadows, so these will come to life again a little bit more than they are right now. Let's move into the purple. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll add the dot for the purple to start with, and the dot is gonna be a very nice light pink. So it's gonna be this color here, the middle of the fourth column from the right. Same principle applies, find your dot, draw a circle, keep it nice and light and let it sort of get a little bit larger, and then in the middle really sort of 
punch out the color like so. So you've got the center point. Now you can hide everything behind it. So if we go back to our flower layer underneath, we'll go to our colors and we'll grab the top of the third column. And from there we can sort of push outwards and brighten up our petals. So I'm gonna go up to the 2% and just sort of brighten them up like so. I'm gonna brighten up the top edge here and I'm gonna sort of run that down in a sort of straight line in towards the middle. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna brighten up this top edge over here and then blend that down. The ones at the bottom here, I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to about sort of 2% because I've got quite narrow ones here and I'm just gonna create like a bit of a U shape keeping the center a little bit darker. I'll do the same over here as well. I'm just gonna keep the center a little bit darker like so. That leaf is done with, that petal and flower is done with. Let's move to the yellow one. I'm getting my words it's all messed up at this point. We'll go ahead and while we're working on the actual flower layer, we'll just carry on as we are. So we'll go to the top of the fourth column we introduce the brighter tone, so up here, circular motion, and then kind of just blend down in towards your center point. I'm gonna add in a lovely bright edge on the side of this one, on the top edge, top edge of here, and really push it down. And you can see I'm not being too sort of overly protective over things being a little bit more painting-y like, and um, also just trying to make sure that, you know, it does have the same aesthetic to the rest of it. I want it to have that very loose, almost child-like uh, illustration. Then for the center point of this one, we're gonna go up to the dots that we created above for the center points of the layer above. Go to our colors and we'll grab this color here, the middle of the third column. Brush eyes, nice and small. Go round in a circle, creating a really nice light circle to start with and then darken up the center as we've just done. And if you zoom out, all your flowers have got some nice color to them. Let's then add in some shadows to them. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer above our flowers themselves and then tap on that layer and clipping mask it. And also tap on that layer and drawing assist it so we can't paint outside of it. And then at that point, we can then get in here and just create some additional details with a dark color, which is gonna be the middle of the fifth column, our little shadow color that we used before. So for example, the yellow one. I'm gonna go ahead and start to separate some petals from one another. So here I'm gonna let this one be a little bit more dominant and then just kind of shade up here. I'm gonna create a center line as well. And you can see how light I'm pressing, keeping it really, really light. We don't need to do anything too bold unless you wanna sort of bright, darken up, should I say, some of the edges over here. Over here, we've got to pick which petal sits in front of which. So I've picked this one in front of this one. I'm gonna then darken up and blend out from here. And then you can maybe think about certain areas. I'm gonna also make it sit in front of the one on the right as well. And then just blend that out. You wanna create the center line as well. Center lines are important just to see that where the center of the, the petal is up into here. And the ones towards the top, you don't really need to add too much to. You can add a very light shadow here if you want just to sort of separate again the petals from one another. You don't have to go too crazy. And I think that looks pretty good to me. So take a look at that one and try and match up to that as best you can. This one up here, it's gonna be a little bit trickier to do because of the changes of color. Like these ones are a little bit more uh, blue to one another and the purple and the blue together do look good, but the shadows are not gonna be quite as prominent. Now I'm drawing in the center lines just quickly of all the petals. And then I'm gonna try and pick which ones sit in front of which again. So I'm just gonna draw a line here to follow the curvature of this petal. I'll follow the curvature of this petal too, and then just shadow underneath it a little bit more. I'm gonna put it in front of this one as well. So the bottom one is the most dominant one, sits in front of everything. And at the top here, the top petal can sit right at the back. So I'm gonna push that backwards. And that's what we wanna do, just some really simple sort of additional detailing. Again, we're gonna draw out from the center point here. We're gonna draw out all the center of the flowers. and then pick which ones sit in front of which. I'm gonna put this one in front of this one this time. So I'm gonna go around here and then just shade into this gap here where this one's casting a shadow onto here. I'm gonna put the one on the right in front of here as well. I've kind of favored this one too many times now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just even it out, blending that down a little bit. And then this one here, I'm gonna put that one in front as well and then just blend underneath. You don't have to go too mad with these highlights and shadows, or these shadows, should I say. 
I'm going to put this one in front and then just blend underneath. It's just some tiny additional details and we want to keep them really, really light. And if we zoom out, they now just have that just a little bit more definition to them. And what we can do to really sort of give this a final sort of fun flare effect is if we go to our layers, we're going to go ahead and create another new layer. We will go ahead and tap on it and drawing assist it. We're going to go to our brush and go back into inking and the studio pen. And the colors that we used for the flowers, so the bottom here of the second column, for example, we can just add some sort of scattered petals in the air to keep the sort of pressure nice and light at the beginning and at the end, and then in the middle, use some weight. And then you now have it symmetrical. Now it's totally up to you. To be honest, I'm gonna to go to the layer, I'm gonna tap on it and turn off the drawing assist. If you don't like the symmetry of this part, just turn it off, go to your eraser and erase one side, and then carry on from here. So I'm gonna go back to my brush, over here on the left, I'm gonna start off really light and just pressure and then really light again, just to create like a, uh, a petal that's flying around in the air. I'm gonna to go to my colors and then grab the purple color that we used. So it was the middle of the third column and we'll introduce some more. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep my pressure nice and light and then nice and light at either end. Now, if you end up with a blob like this, just go to your eraser, tap on your eraser and use something like the monoline brush and then just follow the curvature of the shape at the top, like so. So just follow the curve round at the top, erase all the little extra bits, and you should end up with a petal-like shape. I'm gonna move over to the opposite side and do the same. So nice and sort of light pressure on either end. And again, if you don't like it, just go to your eraser. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger to save some time, about 14%. And I'm just gonna put a curve in there, and that's all we need to do. So we're just gonna fill out this space now with a couple of different colors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move into the top color though of the third column. So we've got a little bit of a lighter purple just to make it a little bit lighter to look at. So a little something like that. I like that shape. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna draw in another one at the top. Then I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna grab the yellow tones at the top of the fourth column. I'm gonna introduce another color here. Just some more scattered little sort of petals here. And you can put some really small ones at the very top up here if you want just sort of making their way a little bit further away from our design. If we then move into our colors, we can add some green in there if you want. I'm gonna keep it just to the petal colors though. I'm gonna to move to the middle of the fourth column and then just introduce some final colors in here where we can. A little something like that and then I'll grab my eraser and just round off following either side so you can follow the top edge and then the bottom edge like so. So if we go to our layers, you can compress all your background elements together if you're done with them. We're gonna go ahead and go above our bare group. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and grab the green again at the bottom of the fifth column. Same brush as it was before, but we're gonna go back down to the 19%. So I can be a bit more sort of precise with my pressure. And starting just behind the ear over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a sort of curve. So we're gonna kind of follow this curve kind of shape here, but utilizing the green to get us from side to side. So just like a headband here, you can leave gaps. You don't need to make all the, the shapes connect. The only thing you wanna do is have that light amount of pressure here and there, and then just let it get nice and thin on the end. I'm gonna create one more curve outwards and then another one that just runs up and in behind the ear like so. So I'll just extend this one over here. As long as you've got something like this and then maybe sort of another one over here. I've got a little dot there I'm gonna get rid of. We've got the basics in place. We'll then go ahead and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors and grab the darker green just beside it, the bottom of the fourth column. Brush, same brush. And I'm gonna increase the size back up to the 57% mark. So I'm gonna rotate my canvas and we're just gonna create some additional blades up here. So I'm just gonna start again, just like we did before just creating some additional areas. Now try not to follow the same uh, sort of flow as the original greens that you added as well. You know, try and let some just come in from different angles and just fall off a little bit more. So what I mean by that is you can start off really light here and just let that sort of fall down a little bit here, just as leaves would. You can go ahead and well, let's think about maybe popping one in here. A little something like that. And how many have we got? We've got four across there. We could probably do with one on the top just to sort of balance it out. So I'm gonna start with another one just here and just let that run out. And again, if you don't like the look, just grab your eraser 
using that monoline brush, just curve out the top. They don't all have to be perfect. And while we're working on that layer, let's just simply tap on it, alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. Go to our colors and grab the green here, the bottom of the fifth column. Go back to your brush and go back to painting and the spectra. And we'll go ahead and we will just brighten up the bottom. So I'm gonna go back up to the 6% mark, I think. In fact, that's way too large. We'll go up to three and nice and bright and then let that blend out. Nice and bright and let that blend out. You don't always have to press really firm. You can let the green have quite a sort of dark look to it. You don't have to have it blend into the green area at all. It's totally up to you. I quite like the, the sort of fall off of the color, but it's not mandatory. And there we go, we've got some lovely green colors up there. Now, if you want to, you could be a little bit cheeky here. We can go to our flowers that we've drawn before. And as long as you're happy with them down here, you can go ahead and pinch the flower heads together. So we've got the dots themselves. So we need to find the dots layer, grab them and drag them so that they are in a three stack here to our flower head. So we've got the dots, we've got the details we added and the actual flowers themselves. If you pinch them together onto one layer, pick whichever flower you like or multiple. I'm gonna go ahead and grab something that's a little bit different to the color that we've got up there. So I'm gonna grab the purple one. I'm gonna to go to my selection tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around the purple one, tap on the dot, then go to copy paste. Then go to your layer, drag this flower all the way to the top of your layers underneath your stencil and then grab your cursor and move it. Move it up to the top, rotate it so it's a little bit different. You can put one up here, you can pick and choose where you wanna sort of position it. You can do multiple, it's totally up to you. You can tap on your cursor, you could have multiple flowers up here if you like. I'm gonna find the best spot for it though, which I think will actually be around about there instead. And you can grab your cursor as well. You can grab distort and maybe just drag out the very bottom right node and the very bottom left node to kind of flatten it a little bit more to the head. And if you grab uniform, you can make it a little bit bigger. So by dragging out the very bottom right using distort here and the bottom left, you can kind of flatten it down a bit more. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we're gonna to go to our bear group. Now you don't necessarily need to have a group for this. We just need to create a new layer in front of it. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab our shadow color here, the uh, fifth color in that middle row. Your brush wants to be the spectra still. And the size, keep it about 2%. We just need to add in a very, very light shadow underneath this work that we've done. So really, really light if you can. Just add in a bit of a shadow underneath them and blend it down in certain areas. So here where I've got this leaf, I'm just gonna sort of create a bit of a shadow underneath it. I've got another little blade of green here, underside only really. I'm trying to keep it super, super gentle. So I'm gonna go around here, a little bit under there too, a little bit under there. Some of them can be a little bit darker, that's fine. And especially more so towards sort of the main spine of this little headband area that we're drawing in. You can keep that a little bit darker. So I'm now going back through just to sort of darken it up underneath a tiny bit more, match up to the shading colors we've added in previously and then sort of blend that down. Now, if you have something that looks like it flicks up and off of the head, you can drag the shadow down, but it doesn't need to connect. By connect, I mean as in it doesn't need to be right underneath it. That shadow there represents that and it's curving up. So you don't need to add in a shadow that always connects. You can always have a shadow that's a little bit further from the object to make it look like it is raising off of the surface that you're portraying the shadow onto. Zooming out, you should have this lovely little headband there at the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go up to my actions. I'm gonna turn off my drawing guide. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch with two fingers, go full screen with four, and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure to comment down below of what you thought of this illustration. And as always, if you tag me in your finished creations, make sure to do so on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere I am. Tagging me just allows me to see it in my feed. And you can do one better and share it with the Discord community that we have. Again, both will be linked in the description down below. As always, a massive shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you want to get your name featured in videos, get access to a catalogue of exclusive tutorials that sits at over 80, nearly 90 at the time of recording, then hit the link in the description down below where you can also get early access to YouTube tutorials just like this. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.